In my previous videos, I've shown you some of the other Festo mech labs. There are three different mech labs. This is the third one, the robotic stack, stacker, or and simply moves apart from one location to another. And as with the assembler, the one that has the compression cylinder, this one is also pneumatic, whereas the conveyor sorter is all electric. So let's take a look at the basic operation of this mech lab. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it up to the PLC. So I'm using the Automation Direct PLC to control this. Uh, the program's already in and running. And to start the sequence, I need to press my momentary push button. So it's going to go down, rip the part, raise up, move over, move back down, release the part, raise back up, and return back to the home position. As with all of the mech labs, these can be reconfigured in a number of different ways. So there could be sensors here to detect the presence of the part. We could uh, be picking up the one half of the part and actually placing it on top of the other half. So any number of different things you could do with this. And these mech labs, uh, I've not done it, but supposedly these mech labs, you can configure them in such a way that all three work together, whereas one is maybe feeding and assembling parts for another station and then doing the sorting down the road. Uh, I've not done that. I will show you though in a later video where I control all three at one time using one PLC, just to de demonstrate that uh, easy capability of a PLC. So let's take a little bit closer look at the uh, mech lab here. We have the I.O. block. And with that I.O. block, we have five inputs and we have five outputs. The inputs are the push button to signal the start of the cycle. And then we have four positional sensors on two of the cylinders. So there are two on this cylinder and then there are two on this cylinder. The two on this cylinder are to detect the retracted position. You can see the light on right now because of this horizontal cylinder being in that retracted position. I'm actually going to turn off the air here. And if I go ahead and move this cylinder out, that'll go off because now that cylinder piston is in some intermediate position. But if I go far enough, you'll see that the other sensor will come on, indicating that that is now fully extended. So we have these two inputs here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around so that we can see the other two a little bit better. So let me remove the air, make this a little bit easier to do. And I'm going to leave my cable connected so that we have power to the I.O. better here. So we have here then on this cylinder two sensors. You'll see that this one is currently lit indicating that this vertical cylinder is in a retracted position. There's one on this side so that when that vertical cylinder extends we'll know that it's now in that extended position. So we've got the one, two, three, four, and then the push button being the fifth input. You'll also see that we have valves as we did before and the valves as before are mixed. We have one that looks different from the other two but we do have a total of three valves because we have a total of three cylinders. We have the horizontal, we have the vertical, and the gripper is also a pneumatic cylinder. No sensors on it but it is a pneumatic cylinder. One of those cylinders is being controlled by this valve that has a single solenoid on it. It is a four two-way valve. The other two are also four two-way valves, but they have double solenoid control. So with this one, when I energize the coil, the solenoid, my spool of my valve will shift, causing the cylinder to move out of its current position into the opposite position. As soon as I de-energize this solenoid, 
The spool in here will return because it is a spring return and that cylinder will return back to its normal position. With these double solenoid controlled valves, or uh, yeah, double solenoid controlled valves and therefore cylinders, there are also four two ways. When I energize one of the solenoids, the spool will shift. The cylinder will move into a particular position. When I de-energize it, it will stay in that position because of a detent. When I energize the opposing solenoid, that spool will shift, causing that cylinder to move into the other position. So we have a total then of one, two, three, four, five outputs to control those three cylinders. Well, some may ask, you know, why use different valves here? Why not simply use all single solenoid ones? Or why not use all double solenoid ones? And that's a good question. Uh, one reason is, obviously, if we're using single solenoid controlled valves, the valve is going to be cheaper because we only have one solenoid on it because these are all still four two-way valves. It'll be cheaper. Also, we're using fewer I.O. I only use one output to control the one cylinder. Well, these take two outputs to control a single cylinder. So why, why use the double? Um, there are reasons. Um, one is sometimes the program is a little bit easier to use the double versus the single. Sometimes you want to maintain that detented feature. What I don't have to keep this energized all the time in order to keep the valve in that particular position. So if there were a power failure and I were to lose power to my PLC, to my coils, I don't have to worry about the machine moving into some other position. It'll hold that position. And that could be for safety reasons, it could be for other reasons. So there's a number of reasons why we may have this configured the way it is. So that is the third of the Festo Mech Labs. I hope you uh, take a look at my other videos. I hope you like what you've seen. Please give me any comments and suggestions as to what you would like to see, how I can improve my videos or my site. Appreciate any feedback that you guys give me. And again, if you like what you see, please subscribe. Thank you.